A paper recently just came out. It's called Social Tipping Dynamics for Stabilizing Earth's Climate by 2050. Now, this paper was based on lots of correspondence between different um, climate people and economics people and philosophy people. You know, online meetings, of course, in our world of uh, COVID, you know, virtual meetings. And basically, a whole bunch of these experts came together with some framework for what we need to do in society to have any chance of stabilizing Earth's climate, say, in the next 30 years. Okay, um, so all I'm doing in this video, this is part two, watch the previous vid video if you haven't, is I'm pointing out what these people have come up with. Okay, I'm not saying that this is possible for us to do, uh, but this is what the, the expert consortium, the so-called in quotes expert consortium um, has, has come up with. Okay, so this is the paper and I believe it's open source so you can just Google the title and have a read yourself, but I'm giving you the, the highlights. Okay, so I showed you in the last video how this is the rate of change of emissions per year you know, where we're at right now and where we need to go in order to meet certain temperature targets. And we have to, we have to have cut in half global emissions every 10 years in order to achieve this, to be anywhere close to achieving the Paris uh, targets. And again, I caution you on the pre-industrial period, what that means. Here it's probably 1880 to 1910. Okay, so the idea is that, you know, we're stuck in this valley, business as usual state, and by social tipping interventions, human tipping points, if we can lower this hill and get Earth to a decarbonized state, that would be the objective to maintaining uh, life on this planet. So there's different candidates for all of these social tipping elements. Um, for rapid decarbonization, and I talked about a number of them towards the end of the last video. So, you know, a lot of them are technology based. It's all in energy production and storage, knowledge, and getting that knowledge on climate change, how dire the risks are to the public, you know, educating very, you know, in the school system from the very young to the very old, um, you know, on the dire nature of, of, our, of our abrupt climate change system breakdown. And, you know, values and norms have to change, human settlements, so cities going to fossil free. The whole idea is we got to get rid of fossil fuels. We got to go to renewable energies and do it as quickly as possible, you know. And it has to be done, you know, if we were to, the, the level of work and effort to maintain life on this planet exceeds anything uh, that we've ever seen in, in history, okay? This is, our, this, is the, this is the task that we have before us. You know, lifestyles, citizen involvement, education system. Okay, these are just the things that um, this uh, think tank came up with. And then they talk about these social tipping elements. So energy production and storage is a big one. We need, we need to get rid of subsidies on fossil fuels, number one, and we need to promote decentralized energy production, number two. Okay, and we need to do these quick. I mean, it takes time to trigger the tipping points, but it will have a huge impact on greenhouse gas emission reductions. Human settlements, okay, we need carbon neutral cities. We need to get rid of the demand for fossil fuel technology, increase the demand for fossil fuel free technology. You know, most people live in cities, more and more people are migrating to cities. So this is a key area. This is social tipping element number two. The financial markets is number three. We need the divestment movement is a perfect example. Okay, we need to use market mechanisms to get off of fossil fuels as quickly as possible onto renewable energies. STE4, the norms and values systems. It's clear that the fossil, burning fossil fuels and putting money into fossil fuels and expanding fossil fuels is immoral. 
okay? It's immoral because it's creating a disaster and it's going to terminate life on this planet for humans. The perception, okay? So this has to get out there. This is unprecedented in human history. We, we are facing a crisis of staggering proportions and we're doing everything wrong and continuing to go down the wrong pathway. The education system is a huge part of, we need to educate people on climate, how risky it is, how bad it is, and on, you know, people can come up with ideas and also, you know, to work on both adaptation and mitigation and resilience because we failed miserably with the virus, okay? The virus got out of control around the world and people, humanity and countries just were not prepared for it. So it was a dry run on resilience and we failed miserably. We need to find the, examine the vulnerabilities you know, that, are will, that are coming down the pipe from climate change and um, we need to reverse it. We need to, we need to completely eliminate fossil fuels from the way we do things, okay? So this is a good example. And then you know, there's a lot of details about the individual um, elements and the individual inventions that are required but this is kind of the key um the key plot if you like and i'm going to just see if i can expand it expand it again bring it over here okay so this is the key image okay so we've got the earth climate system here you know, and many of you have probably seen this map, um, which first appeared in a Lenten paper many years ago about tipping elements in the climate system, like the, the ocean currents, the meridional thermohaline circulation, okay, the jet streams slowing down, become wavier, going further in the south, further in the north, causing extreme um, unsettled weather, torrential rains, uh, flooding in the troughs if they're persistent and stuck, and heat waves, droughts, um, massive losses of crops from, from uh, dried soils and extensive droughts in the ridges, the boreal forests in the north dying back, you know, wildfires galore taking off, permafrost thawing, tundra coming off, coming out. This is the Yodoma in northern Siberia regions, northern Canada regions. The Arctic, loss of sea ice, um, the Arctic becoming a much darker place, the Arctic flipping to an ice-free state, the only, Greenland being the only center of ice left in the Arctic, so a complete reorientation, not just slowing and waviness of the jet streams, but a total shift of the jet streams to rotate about the center of Greenland as opposed to the North Pole. Um, the Amazon rainforest collapse, methane hydrates destabilizing, tropical coral reefs completely vanishing, you know, so, so marine ecosystems being devastated, okay, uh, huge Antarctic ice melt, etc. All of these are the climate um, one, the Earth climate system tipping elements, okay, and you can click, I'll call these part of the world Earth system feedbacks. There's direct and indirect. There's positive feedbacks occurring, cascading feedbacks. So, for example, you get, you know, a hu huge calving from Antarctica, raises sea level, causes huge calving from Greenland and so on. All these different cascading feedbacks. So this is what people need to do. This is what societies need to do very, very quickly. So we need more and more innovation and we need to stabilize the system. So we've got these world system of human societies, these different social structure layers. So customs, norms, religion, policies, regulations from government, infrastructure, technology, governance, resource allocation, and market exchange. Now the time needed to trigger these social tipping points, this can be very rapid, the markets. Okay, technology and governance, also fairly rapid, five to 10 years uh, to tip. Policies and regulations are slower, and, but customs, norms, and religion, very, very slow, very, very slow. So here is what we have. We have uh, 
the, the uh, social tipping element number one, energy production and storage system lies in here. Okay, the size of the bubbles, you can look at the time frames expected. We need to remove fossil fuel subsidies from fossil fuel all around the world. Okay, we need to push for decentralized energy generation. Okay, and then this leads into human settlements or cities. Okay, we need carbon neutral cities. More and more people are becoming urban people. They're moving from the rural areas into cities and cities are growing. We're getting mega cities. So these are the, these are the places we need to make these carbon neutral. The financial markets here, very rapid, um, very rapid. They can tip very rapid. You know, they can move on a dime, the financial markets. So we need fossil fuel divestment globally. Okay, we need to say, okay, oil companies, stocks are worth zero. The, the, the fossil fuels that they have in the ground can't dig up, can't exploit. So they go to zero. We got to get rid of the fossil fuel industry, the fossil fuel uh, companies. Okay, they have the most power in the world. So it's a very, very difficult thing to do. But if we want to survive, that's the way we have to go. Then the norms and values here the norms and values system, we need to recognize the, that fossil fuel exploitation, development, research, everything to do with fossil fuels is immoral. It's killing the planet, it's killing all life on the planet. But this is a very tough thing to change. It's very slow time lag to change the norms and values. The education system, it's a bit faster than the norm, changing norms and values, but we need climate education at the very, very first levels. You know, right now in the public education system, people get almost no climate information. In universities, you can take specific climate courses, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a certain faculty, okay? Uh, but most people only know, only know about climate change, you know, uh, details and facts basically on stuff that they've read on their own or come across on social media. And a lot of that has been inaccurate. We need education, climate education from day one in the schools. Should be part of every subject, right? Talking about climate change. And then information feedbacks, you know, greenhouse gas information disclosure. If we disclosed how many emissions were embedded in all products, Okay, and had this information, this information going viral, we need to exploit the viral nature of social media in order to transition to doing these sort of things in order to have any hope of surviving on this planet. It's extremely dire and the COVID situation has not just pointed out how vulnerable society is to um, to spikes and hits and changes in supply systems, all the rest of it, to how divided the planet is in terms of the have and have not. And, uh, you know, everybody losing their jobs and the billionaires making billions upon billions and billions, okay? The total um, in insanity of, of, our, of our systems, right? Um, but, you know that the the covid thing is 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 not you know it it all all pandemics have ended you know more and more people are being vaccinated you know it's a race against the variants but all pandemics have ended you know 1918 1919 spanish flu it ended they didn't have vaccines it ended way more people were killed and people built up a herd immunity and it went away it became part of the the, the general uh you know seasonal flu so one of the interesting connections um, that um, I've really been talking about is I, we need CO2 monitors in every indoor public space. We, they're, they're inexpensive. When the CO2 level indoors goes to higher level, goes to higher than double external outdoors levels, an alarm should go off and that public space needs to be evacuated or ventilated. Ventilation needs to be improved. Also, everybody will become aware of what the CO2 level is outside and indoors, and that will greatly help in 
getting information to the public about how serious climate change is, when they see the CO2 number inexorably rise to, to ever dangerous levels. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye for now.